right, and welcome back for the second part of the Vitole AMC session. We will have uh, now two presentations, the first one on the flight control system uh, by Duncan Jones from EASA, and the next one will be on the propulsion system safety by uh, Kyle Aero Nimus from Bell. Yeah, correct, thank you. Um, yeah, so before we get started with the presentation, just a point of clarification about what is an AMC. Uh, sometimes we use the word accepted, sometimes we use the word acceptable, sometimes we say a standard, sometimes AMC. Uh, so the intent from EASA is to publish accepted means of compliance for the special condition VTOL on small VTOL. So they are not considered as acceptable because we have not went through a rulemaking process. So it's accepted because we believe they uh, provide compliance to the requirements, but it's not uh, an AMC uh, as such. And EASA AMCs will provide a high-level framework, and this framework will be supported by one or several standards with uh, much more details. And your OKE is developing together with the industry a number of standards that will support uh, this uh, compliance at AMC level. With this clarify, we can get started. Uh, Duncan, you are the first one on stage. Afternoon, everybody. You're all showing great stamina by lasting through the afternoon to this point, so hopefully I won't put you off. So, my name's Duncan Jones. I'm part of a team at EASA, the Hydromechanical and Flight Control Systems team. And uh, we work together on preparing both the AMC uh, for the SC VTOL for flight controls and in, pr in this presentation. <coughs> so when we f first started looking at this topic, we decided that um, we could draw on, the, we would look at the unique characteristics of the VTOL aircraft. Um, and as far as we know, every application we've received and every uh, proposed VTOL aircraft that's uh, been shown to us has a complex closed loop flight control system. They're all fly by wire. And also for the enhanced category and for the higher basic category in the SC VTOL, uh, the objective is the same as the safety objectives for CS25 and CS29 aircraft. In other words, no single failure, extremely improbable, and FDAL A. So we, uh, we drew on our, um, our experience of uh, critical and complex flight controls and our past fly-by-wire experience for many CS25 aircraft. And as the VTOLs are functionally closer to rotorcraft, um, we had a good starting point from our recent work with the FAA on a fly-by-wire helicopter rotorcraft. Um, so we had a good set of uh, generic uh, certification review items available for that. So the scope of the AMC. Uh, this is the first issue. Uh, so it's called 01. Hardly surprising, I suppose. Uh, but we acknowledge there could be additional guidance needed as we progress. Uh, so 02, 03, etc but the knowledge at the moment is all in the 01 document. It's, as I said in the first slide, it's fly-by-wire only. We don't foresee any conventional controls, any conventionally uh, rod and pulley operated flight controls for VTOL aircraft. And there's several um, panel four topics, topics that we normally deal with in, in our group, that are not dealt with by this uh, AMC VTOL the, the fly-by-wire VTOL. That's, for instance, the ground manoeuvring. Now, that might seem a strange thing to say, but there might be some flight control aspects where you need to turn the aircraft towards the prevailing wind, for instance, but at the moment, that's not covered. Uh, doors, handling qualities, as you saw earlier on from Hamdi's presentation. Um, certification credit for simulators and rig testing. Uh, we're noticing in some part 25 aircraft and part 29 aircraft that um, manufacturers are relying quite heavily on simulations, uh, but that is not covered in this VTOL, in this AMC. So it may be 
that we need another one. It may be 02 or 03 as we go through. Uh, it doesn't deal with the interaction of systems and structures, but I believe tomorrow there'll be a presentation from one of my colleagues from the structures group that will uh, address that. When we also don't uh, cover total engine failure or total electrical failure, um, which again, I think will be covered by another AMC that will be introduced to you tomorrow. So that's enough of what it doesn't contain. What does it contain? We have um, definitions, of course, because we want to tell you, for instance, what we consider to be a flight control computer, what we consider to be a flight control actuator, and things like that. And here also there is a recognition of parts of the ASTM flight control standard that was introduced in CS23 Amendment 5. So we've chosen those ASTM standards that directly address fly-by-wire flight control systems. We also provide additional guidance material for uh, specific, specific, specificities, specific parts of flight fly-by-wire systems. So the requirements that the AMC VTOL addresses is not just VTOL 2300 for the flight control systems, it also touches on controllability, flying qualities, the lift to thrust system, and uh, the installation support systems, uh, safety of course 2500 and 2510 which you saw just before the break, and the flight navigation and lift thrust system instruments. So the topics, this is a topic breakdown which is not done by a uh, specific AMC VTOL, but we address the pre-flight check, the fact that you need to ensure that there's full control authority available prior to flight. We look at uh, control margin awareness. This is so that the crew know how close they're getting to any particular limit, whether it be an operational limit or um, a system limit. Uh, flight crew awareness of modes of operation. Sometimes flight control systems uh, degrade in modes to allow um, uh, availability of flight control functions, but they haven't got quite the range that they would normally have if in a fully functioning system. So we, there's an AMC about um, to, to make sure that the flight crew are aware of where they are in their flight control envelope. We also address flight envelope protection to make sure that structural and operational limits are not exceeded and there may be critical component limits. Um, and we have a, a part that talks about flight control and critical displays at all attitudes. This is to ensure that flight information and control is available during all maneuvers. Continuing the topics covered, we have control signal integrity. This, is, uh, this identifies different malfunctions, both internal and external, that could cause perturbations to flight control signals. Uh, the validation of electronic flight control laws describes the formalization of that process. Um, we have a section that deals with flight control jams of both the flight crew controls and any control surfaces they may be. And consideration of common mode failures in flight control functions. This is coordinated with uh, our safety group as, as just before, as described just before the break. And how hidden failures are, or latent <coughs> failures, should be addressed in the safety analysis. So that's my presentation. Uh, thank you very much.